This is the second of many videos documenting the development of 2-bit. 2-bit is a virtual 2D physics system, but in these initial stages of development, a cellular automation model is used while developing the core functions. In the previous video, I covered version 0.01 .01 to 0.04. This video covers 0.05 to 0.07. Perhaps the most important change in these new features is a new approach to the time ticker. In the previous version, you would design your physics function, and it would receive a pointer to all of space and the current xy. All of space is basically just a long string of data, chopped into rows and stacked vertically to create a 2D space. This method works fine, but it has some serious drawbacks. Because the time ticker xy only sends you a pointer to all of space and your current xy, you need to calculate out your neighbors yourself. The neighbor on your left is x minus 1, the neighbor on your right is x plus 1, the neighbor on your bottom right is y plus 1 and x plus 1, etc. The problem occurs when you receive an xy coordinate around the edge of the grid. In the corners, there are actually five points that exist off space. On the sides, there are three. So to avoid segmentation faults, you can't just call x minus 1. You also have to check if x is greater than 0. This extra step on every point of space at every tick could be cumbersome if your space is large and you're trying to process a lot of time fast. To alleviate this, I created an alternative to the xy functions called the three pointer functions. Simple naming convention difference. Underscore xy versus underscore 3ptr. These functions send you three pointers to space, your top left, left, and bottom left, containing that row of data. Self is in the second row, second element. They can be called as array elements using static variables, making them much easier to handle. Not only that, it also creates safety nets. For example, if you were on the top of the space, the row above you would be off space. Calling it would cause a segmentation fault. So the time ticker will prepare an empty array of three elements and fill them with a default value. It does the same on the left, but it has to create three arrays and fill the first value of each with the default value. When it has to create these safeties, you won't actually be looking at the original space data array. But that doesn't matter because you write your data into space underscore next, not into space. There's also been a whole new function added called the speed test. A version of speed test exists for both types xy and three pointer, named respectively of course. These functions are called similarly to the time ticker function, except that they have two extra variables. The first, mode, which isn't actually used yet, it's always default mode zero, and it receives two tick counters instead of one. One is how many time ticks to run, and one is how many times to repeat that entire cycle. This allows you to stress test the system quite easily. It will time it and print out a short speed report. This allows for quick and easy benchmarking and comparisons. Whether you want to compare various physics systems, XY versus three pointer, or various hardware platforms, this little tool works great. Also, a couple previous naming conventions have been changed. Screen printing functions that used to be called printf have been changed to print. Originally I thought I might need some string format parameters, but not anymore, so the f is not relevant. Functions like printf screen one byte have been renamed print screen one byte. Also, the three pointer method was at first called three row. Those naming conventions have been changed from three row to three pointer now. So functions from version 0 0.05 like time ticker three row have been renamed time ticker three pointer. The 2-bit space structure also has a new element called 4 bytes. This contains the four characters that will be used for print screen quarter byte. The default values are in 2bfunk.c, and they are initialized in the space structure, among other things, when the new function tb init space is called. With this handful of small functions, designing a cellular automation system is quite easy. If you open up 2bit.c in version 0.07, you'll find just two functions and main. Each of the two functions is a different physics system. For now we'll just call them game of life rules, because that's what they really are. We're nowhere near a physics system yet. Function names are pretty self-explanatory and it should be pretty easy to figure it out just from the sample source code. And in 2bit.h the size of the grid can be changed, as well as some other variables that don't mean much just yet. But they're all clearly named. There's still so much to add, so I haven't spent a lot of time working on the physics yet, because, well, there's no platform to build the type of physics I'm interested in building yet. But it's still quite fun to play with. I'm actually having more fun with Conway's rules and just adding noise or repeated and random big bangs. And that brings us up to date on version 0.07. This is going to be the final 0.0, .0 version. It's got more or less all the fundamentals now, so I'll polish it off a bit more and call this 0.01. .01. It seems a good place to do so because going into 0.1x we'll be adding some completely new functionalities. Stay tuned for more, and be sure to check out my YouTube channel and subscribe.